Okay, I think we're live. So today is Wake Up Wednesday, um, and I actually anticipated doing this much earlier. Um, I say much earlier, like 45 minutes ago, but well, in all honesty, I got distracted by <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty images for books um, from a designer that I love. And then my mom called me to give me some really great news. So without further ado, um, the really great news that I got from my mom is that the treatment is working. Um, the radiation is working and the chemo is working and her tumor has shrunk quite a bit. So that's awesome. That's what we like to hear. Um, I still get nervous because my, uh, my stepdad died um, two years ago uh, to cancer and his was also working at the time. But this is really, really, really awesome news. So I am happy to hear that it is working. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the start to my day, um, which is a fantastic start, not gonna lie. Um, this time I wanted to show you guys uh, a little bit of my office. So the other side of it currently has a bunch of packing boxes, so we're not gonna show you that. Um, but what I will show you is my super fantastic wallpaper that I put up. Um, Jen L. Gray was on the phone with me while I was putting this up. Um, so she can attest to the huffing and puffing um, and blowing a house down kind of mentality there. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my super awesome wallpaper. And then you can see behind me, I've got, um, let's see, I've got my, my roses, one of my masks that I bought at a Ren Faire, um, some super amazing books over here, um, most of which are not actually mine. Um, you know, oh, and some, some books that are signed that are gonna be auctioned too. So that's super fun. Um, I actually, I'll be honest, I, I don't know if those have gone up yet. I kind of lose track of time um, very easily. So, but they are going to be auctioned if they have not already gone up. I don't believe they have. Um, so yeah, here's my super awesome office. And then you can take a look at my bookshelf. So all of these amazing books that are plastic wrapped right here. Yes, these. These are all books that are uh, available in my shop at kelcarpenterstore.com. So... We've got paperbacks and some hardbacks. And I wanted to show you guys, um, I have pretty interiors that I had done for the Grim Brotherhood series um, for the new paperbacks of it. Um, and I meant to show you and then I accidentally wrapped them all up. So I guess I won't be able to show you guys that today, but they are super pretty and I did take a couple pictures. So if someone reminds me, since I'm certain I'll forget, um, when this video is over, then uh, I can I can do the do the thing and um, post them. But I've got lots of journals and some different writing books and whatnot up there. There we go. That's how we turn it. Uh, my super amazing uh, Cthulhu um, knitted. Knitted Cthulhu, I love him. And no, he is not a toy. My child does not get to play with him because he's beautiful. And I don't want him covered in drool. If I wanted that, I'd give him to my dogs. So we've got our super amazing Cthulhu and then our wooden hoodoo doll up top, um, which I also love and got when I was in New Orleans with AJ. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, no, I... Uh, so this is my office, the humble abode, and it is finally coming together, which I'm really happy about. I don't know about you guys, but if my space doesn't feel like comfortable for me um, and like what I want it to be, which in my office, like I want it to be relaxing, but also like not too distracting. So like without that, I, um, I have a hard time getting work done. And yesterday I had a really good words day for me. I wrote 3000 words, a bit over that. Um, so that's pretty solid for me. Um, when I'm like really on my game and able to do a lot, I, uh, I can write like 3,000, 
4,000 words. Um, one time I got 10,000 in a day, one time in like the last decade <laughs> since I was writing well before I published. Um, yeah, my first book that went on to become a bestseller, actually, I wrote it at 15, believe it or not. So Daisley, when I, I kind of laugh when people are like, 15 year olds don't think like this. Like I do kind of laugh a bit to myself, I won't lie. Um, because I wrote it at 15. So I'm like, 15 year olds very much think like this. This was actually edited heavily to be less angsty. And it's still very angsty. Um, because that's teenagers for you. And I love it. Like, I mean, what's the point of having phases if you can't just like be them to the max and teenagers and angst go hand in hand. Um, and there's no shame about that. So, you know, my super angsty um, first book I wrote is like, yeah, I wrote it when I was 15. And then I edited it like over the years, many times. I, I think I wrote the beginning like 20 times. Like I wrote it and I rewrote it and I rewrote it. And like, eventually I, um, when I did hire an editor to work with for it, then it was like super intense edits um, and a lot of deleting <laughs> of things. Um, and that's kind of the version that you guys have come to see today. Um, with an additional edit. I actually did have another edit. Um, I had A go through it again um, so that it was like more clean and on par with um, more of my current work since I still really like that series. And oddly enough, that series is one that always attracts publishers. So I've sold it to a German publisher. I've sold it to a French publisher and the first book's already out. I've sold it to a Portuguese publisher. Um, so all the fun things. Good morning, Sydney. Um, I don't know if there's only one comment, but it's showing only one comment. So I'm going to tell you good morning, Sydney Collins. Um, thank you for being on my live. I super appreciate that. You love that series. Oh, that's awesome. I love that series too. I often get asked what's my favorite series and I'm not sure that I truly have a favorite. Um, fun fact, it's almost never the one I'm writing. That's usually the least favorite. Before I'm writing it, it's the favorite because it's like, oh my God, this is the series I want to write so bad. And then as soon as I'm supposed to be writing it, then it's like, mm, how about not? <laughs> because that's how that goes, you know. Um, as as promised, this is a true wake up Wednesday. My hair has not been brushed. It is, it is how I work um, with my hair pulled back in a messy bun, uh, and my really, really super baggy Old Navy t-shirt that's actually from the men's section because they're way more comfortable if you have super wide shoulders like I do. Um, thank you, Daphne. I appreciate that. Um, Daphne said she thought that's amazing that I wrote it so young. Um, and I appreciate that. It, uh, that one's special to me. I will say that. So I don't have a favorite, but that one is special to me because it's the first. And there's something really cool about the first for things, like the first book that someone writes. Um, I know a lot of newer authors kind of get some flack, but there's something usually really amazing about that first book, because when an author is writing their first book, like 99 times out of 100, they're not thinking about the market when they write it. They're not thinking about will this sell or, you know, will this... Uh, Will this pay for my my corgi's yaki chews, as you might be able to hear him over here. He's not quiet with them. Um, you know, you're not thinking about like all of those things. You're writing what you want to read. Um, you're writing something from the heart. And there's something really, really cool and special about that. So I, I think it's really awesome um, when I hear about people writing their first book and like, I remember that phase and it was long enough ago now that I don't remember it as much as I did before, but I remember that feeling um, and how much it has changed for me. So I still love writing, obviously. I mean, I, I wouldn't, honestly, I, I wouldn't do this job if I didn't. I love it. I love it so much, but I, you know, it's one of those jobs that you need to have a passion for. Um, like you can be an accountant without a passion for accounting. I don't, I don't know what a passion for accounting would even look like, but you can do that. Like you can be, 
I don't know. I wouldn't say you can be a doctor without a passion for it because honestly, like they work so much. I don't think you could. Um, you can be a bureaucrat without a passion for it. There's a great example. Shout out to my my husband. Um, you know, so like there's a lot of things you can do without that, but this is not one of them, I don't believe. Um, at least not for me. I think it would get very old because not only do you have to write the books, which is like 30, 35% of the work, um, you have to market the book. And marketing is a skill, a skill some people have and some people don't. Um, and there's different kinds of marketing too. Like, are you really great at marketing on like TikTok? Newsflash, I'm not. I'm super inconsistent. TikTok algorithms hate me. So if you follow me on TikTok, I do post there infrequently, but it is infrequent, I won't lie. I'm trying to get more, more frequent on my Instagram. Um, I'm actually putting together a super, super cool promo on Instagram that's gonna have a bunch of super, super cool uh, paranormal and fantasy romance authors that involves paperbacks and people getting paperbacks. And so yeah, um, if, you, if you want to enter that, you might wanna follow me on Instagram because I'll be posting about it here in another week or two. Um, but yeah, you know, so like, I don't know. I don't even know where I was going. It is early. I've had, what is it? One cup of coffee. Uh, I've got a little bit too. So I'm almost two full cups. Um, mm. You like my mug here, guys? It says one cat short of crazy. And I adore it. It's, um, it's from TJ Maxx or Marshalls or one of the places like that, um, that always have like the best mugs ever. They're super big and they have super cute catchphrases and they're usually pretty sturdy. Um, you said, oh, that sounds awesome. I mostly find books from Facebook ads or IG. Yeah, no, I run a lot of Facebook ads. I, um, <laughs> I get a lot of readers off of Facebook. I wish more of them knew about my group. It's crazy the number of people that don't. Um, I always get questions like, hey, do you have a group? And I'm just like, I feel like I talk about it everywhere. Like I'm being annoying, but I guess not. Um, or at least not annoying enough. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I also find quite a bit of like what I do read from Facebook ads. Um, Facebook ads are recommendations. Um, so I am in a group. I'm in a few groups, but one group that I'm really like really in and I do a lot of... Um, commenting and whatnot is like one called like fan girls urban romance paranormal romance I, I don't know the full name it starts with fan girls and a couple r's in girls and I think it's missing an i I'm not quite sure um anyways like it's a group I'm in I do run some giveaways there now and then I do think I have one going actually right now that I need to go close out here soon uh, <laughs> that's for hardback and paperbacks of covet me so that's another one that if you're really into like Facebook groups um, and you actually participate in them, which also is a very bad problem of mine. I feel like I participate really well in like five of them and I'm pretty sure I'm in like 300. Um, if that is the case, then uh, <laughs> you might enjoy that one. That one's got a lot of things that are fantasy related and you can find like the most obscure things like someone I swear you could post like a singular one line quote and somehow someone would find the book it's from and it doesn't have to be a super well known quote like Sarah J Moss is about like oh to the people who pray to the stars and the stars that answer them or wish on the stars or something like like it doesn't have to be a super well known one it could be the most obscure thing that like one person in the world has read and that group will find it <laughs> So I like that one. Um, I'm also in a group called the Smut Hood. Fun fact. Um, I read a lot of smut. I read a lot of contemporary romance. Um, I didn't used to, but I do a lot these days. I think for me, some of it is that fantasy requires a lot of mental, like, work, really. Um both in building your own fantasy, like in the writing aspects, but also like how much it requires of you, I feel like is more. Um, and I've been very about standalones these days. That's the other thing is like, I only have so much brain space. And when so many people in fantasy love to do five and six book series, um, I don't have it in me. Those are amazing. Like, I don't want any kind of hate. I don't want people to think I'm hating because there's no hate. I love them when I can get to them. But that's the biggest problem is that I don't have the brain power to get to them um my son is a toddler and he's like 
I, I don't know how to best to best describe him, um, I walk in the kitchen and he's standing on the kitchen table with a spoon and a bowl, banging them like he's making music and then grins at me like he's actually the child of Satan that was like swapped out with my child at birth, um, except for somehow looks like a, a very, very accurate copy of me and my husband combined. So <laughs> like, that's my son. Um, and so because of my son, who I love, like, more than anything in the world, um, I have no brain power to actually do and read all of the things I want to. Definitely see it. I haven't heard of that one. May need to check it out. Facebook groups are killing my TBR. Yeah, I feel that. Um, I, I'm now calling it a BLE. I think we should make this trending. BLE, hashtag BLE. You want to know what that means? Beyond life expectancy, because I'm pretty sure that's what my TBR is now. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know that I will ever fully get to reading it. Um, it it's like hundreds, thousands. I see something and I'm like, oh, I want to read that. And then like what happens? I read like I don't know. If I'm lucky, I read like 40 books a year, maybe 50. But we're we're at BLE now. TBR came and went. Um, I came in at the right time, BLE. Yes, you did, Heather, because it's so true. I need you to go post that in your group now, Heather. For, for people that don't know, Heather Renee is one of my super, super duper awesome friends. Um, and she's amazing and lovely. And you guys should read a bunch of her books. And they're all in KU. And... She's also got a super duper awesome Kickstarter that I backed going on. So if you're into Kickstarter, you should do that. And I am totally pimping the hell out of you right now, Heather, because I love you. I love your face. And I miss you. And I really need you to do a signing in DC so that I can see you. And I know that you won't do that unless you get invited to like a polycon. So I need everyone to read your shit. So a polycon's like, we must have Heather here. All of this, all of these things that I'm doing are with the end goal of having Heather here so that I can see her and her amazing face. Um, hi, Amanda. <laughs> you said, oh, shucks. I love that. Um, so yes, that is kind of uh, what's going on. Um, some people have been asking about audio. So I figured I'd give you a few audio updates now that things are really underway. So yes, several series, books, blah, 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 are coming to audio. Um, so Reject Me is. Reject Me will be out next year. So will Covet Me and Worship Me. So fun fact, all three of those will be out next year. Um, anticipated release months are January, March, and April. Um, Tantor Publishing bought the rights to all those. So those are all coming out in audio. Um, and they're being narrated by super amazing people that I need to go look up the names for again. Um, they're super popular. I want to say Teddy Hamilton is narrating at least one of them. Um, I'm trying to think who else. The name Nicole Poole sounds familiar, but I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, no. Um, so like tons of audio is coming. Um, some people have asked if the Her Immortal Monsters trilogy is coming to audio since the Demons of New Chicago series is an audio. And the answer is yes. And even better, the super amazing Savannah Gilmore and Adam Gold, who I adore both of them. They are like the best people ever to work with. Um, they are narrating it. So they narrated the first series, Demons of New Chicago, in that world and now they're narrating this one which has me super excited because I love when you can keep that kind of consistency so Adam will be doing all of the guy chapters and Savannah will do be doing all of the girl chapters and fun fact Savannah is like the first and only woman I have found that actually can do a male voice I like via narration um Jane Washington posted something recently called like misophonia phonia phobia, phobia I don't I don't I'm probably getting this wrong here but you know, so don't take me at my word. Um, but essentially it has to do with like someone that is very particular about sounds um, and what sounds okay and what doesn't and has like no-go sounds. So one of the reasons I'm not really an audio person, um, there's two main ones, but one of them is that I'm really particular about sounds and voices. And I really struggle most of the time listening to 
females narrating males specifically. Although the same is true in reverse. I won't lie. A lot of times it sounds like when a guy is making fun of a girl and they're like, oh no. Like, you know, might as well be some My Little Pony, nay horsey kind of crap. Um, <laughs> where will the audiobooks be sold at? Uh, they'll be sold on Audible, Spotify, everywhere. Tantor sells their books everywhere. Um, and in case you did not know this, um, Audible is super terrible <laughs> to their authors. So if you can get it somewhere else, please do. It doesn't matter if it's Spotify, Scribd, Apple. Like, I really, I don't care. I probably get paid the same or better probably at the other places. Um, but Audible is super, super freaking awful. Um, and I hate them. And I actually removed a full series from there that I had up there because I hate them so much just to like show my hate fire. And I'm one person in like tons, like they've got so many things. I'm such a small fish by comparison, but you know what? Like it, it takes a ripple to, uh, to form a tidal wave. I don't know, it may not, but I'm gonna go with it. That sounds really cool and like Pinteresty, right? So like you said I can also do audio where the voice doesn't Yeah, yeah. If the voice doesn't match the age of the character, that's a big problem for me too. Um I was really, really picky when choosing people for Daisley. Because Selena sounds older than she is in my head, but she, at the same time, she doesn't sound like a grown woman. Like she, I I Fun fact, I re-aged her to 16. So originally she was 15 because, again, Daisley Academy wrote it when I was 15. Catching all you people up here. Um, but she never sounded 15. Like, my internal voice doesn't sound... I mean, it probably sounds pretty close to me now, but I'm, like, 27 now, something like that. Uh, the one Adam doing... What do, You said, what about the one Adam doing? I'm going to need you to elaborate for me, Amanda. Words are hard. It's early still. I say that it's 1030 in the morning, but it's early still. Um, but yeah, so it was really hard to pick voices. Um, and I eventually like, I kid you not, I had over 100 auditions for that. I had so many people that wanted to narrate it. Um, and Aurelia had the fun job of listening to literally. Oh my god, I have dog hair in my mouth. Thanks to you. Thanks, Sterling. Um, Aurelia... <laughs> I had to listen to all of them with me. And by the end of it, she was like, can someone please remove my ears? Like, shoot me now. It was, it was rough. Yeah, it's rough. And some of them are really great. Um, one of them that actually auditioned was Savannah, who didn't fit for Selena, but she fit perfectly for Piper, who I was writing at the time. And I told her that. I was like, look, I don't think this series is right for you, but I got another series that's coming out and I think you would be amazing for it. So let's do a thing. Um... So that's how I found Savannah, fun fact. Uh, she actually auditioned for a different series. And as for Adam, um, I want to say that he was recommended to me by Heather. I'm pretty sure he was recommended by Heather. And I listened to him once and I was like, sold. This man could read a shampoo bottle and I would listen. Like, And there's not a lot of people like that that I will listen. Um, but he's got a sexy voice and he legit can sound like just like The Witcher or anyone else. I mean, he does an impersonation of Ryan Reynolds for the uh, Demon's Guide series for Hades that is so accurate. It's hilarious and perfect and like everything. Okay, so Amanda said, Adam Gold, who did the Demon, who did the Chicago series. What about the one? So he did the Demons of New Chicago series and he sounds amazing. Um, he does all the, the male narration for those chapters. Um, and he does pretty good with girl voices. He doesn't sound like My Little Pony, you know, nay, how dare she? And we wore a bonnet down ye yonder. Like, no, he doesn't sound like that. Um, he's amazing. I love his voice. I think he does a fantastic job at different voices and accents. And he's like a super lovely human being. Um, he's like that cinnamon roll hero, but like he can totally sound like the mofo that's going to choke you for dessert. Like, it's crazy. So also, if there's parents with small children watching, um, if you didn't know this, you may not want to do my, my Wake Up Wednesdays live. Um, I've got a potty mouth. And until uh, my, my son makes me regret it, I'm probably going to struggle to keep with that. So here we are. Um, 
but yeah, so super great. And so the first book for Kiss, Kiss by Chaos, the first book in that series is actually going to be coming out October 31st, which is also like kind of, it's really, so out of 365 days, this is amazing because that is the main character's birthday in that book. Um, so they didn't know that. And I just found that super cool and was like, maybe it's a sign. I don't know. Like... But yeah, so October 31st, the first book in that series is coming out. And I am so, 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 so stoked for that to happen. Um, I think you guys will love it. Adam and Savannah did a super amazing job on Demons in New Chicago. They also did Demons Guide to the Afterlife. Um, fun fact. And that series also was like amazeballs. Um, they both had a blast doing that one, they told us. So... You know, I have zero doubts that they will be amazing um, when it comes to this one. You said, will Kiss by Chaos be out on audiobook? Yes, that's what I was talking about, is Kiss by Chaos will be out in audio on October 31st. That is what is so cool to me, because October 31st is the heroine's birthday, which has great importance in the book. Um, I doubt there is nearly as much importance on it to Tantor, but it's great importance to me, so... <laughs> You know, we're going to go with that. It's just super cool. And yeah, that's that's that on that one. So I'm uh, I'm really happy that we were able to bring all of these series to audio. Um, the Demon's Guide to the Afterlife series, A and I invested a ton of money into that one um, because everyone was like, oh, my God, we want Demon's Guide. We want Demon's Guide. And then we published it uh, a different way than we usually do. And that kind of ended up screwing our release on both of the first two books, which means that we have not made our money back, which is the first series in audio that I've ever had do that. Um, and it's like struggled and it was like $12,000. So like we, we paid for a car and then our car puttered out two months into its adventure. You know, it, it blows. Um, <laughs> I love my metaphors. If you didn't know this. But, uh, so yeah, that's kind of what happened there. But the thing is, is that that series is really great. Like, it's an awesome series. It's a super well-reviewed series. The audiobooks are amazing. Um, and we actually took them off of Audible because, again, Audible is super terrible to its authors. Um, they do not pay worth a crap. Um, and... You probably, if you're in this Facebook group, have seen that plenty because you're probably in other Facebook groups than for authors. But yes, they don't pay super well. And they're also super shady, which is honestly the more problematic thing. Like, you know, imagine going to work and like being told like, yeah, you'll get paid for your time, but <laughs> your time is going to be determined how we feel like. So like, we're just going to pick like random hours that we, we've we decided that you've worked, um, regardless of whether they're true or not. And, and then we're going to choose your wage that you can't negotiate at all. Um, and I'm actually not even exaggerating. So, like, they don't tell us what they'll pay us per book, and it can change on the drop of a hat. They don't even let us set the price of the books. Like, there's a reason Audible is the most expensive way to purchase a book. Um, and that's their choice. That is not an author's choice. Like, not even publishing houses can set their own prices there because they're that awful. So, you said, where did you have that series at for audiobook now? Um, which series? Demon, Demon's Guide? Demon's Guide's available everywhere. Um, you can purchase it directly from us on our store, RagingHippoStore.com. I say I'm like 90% certain that's it. And you will own it for life then. And it will send you an email via book funnel um, to do the thing. You can also get it on Spotify and own it. Um, you can get it on Scribd. You can get it Apple. Yeah, Apple. Like there's a ton of places you can get it. So um, if you're interested in that one, I super duper duper recommend it. And you can get it literally anywhere. And I would... Me and AJ would massively appreciate it if you got it anywhere except Audible because they suck. Um, <laughs> yes, that is ridiculous. Thank you, Sydney. I agree. It's like truly terrible. Um, I don't think readers realize how much like Amazon and its um, 
it's fuckery. I'm, I'll be straight there. It's fuckery is really like, it's not good. Um, it's like page reads. They can randomly decide how much they're worth. So I could have a million page reads and one month that could be worth $10,000. And one month it could be worth five. Now that's that's a bit dramatic. I mean, they don't cut in half typically, but it can drastically change and result in thousands of dollars lost from one month to the next. And you have no idea it's going to happen. They also do this fun thing called page stripping where they've decided that an AI has given you page reads instead of a reader. And therefore they're going to take them away. Like it never happened and there is nothing you can do. There is no recourse and there's no way to get them back. So even if there was nothing that you did shady and there was no AI, and you just promoted your book. Maybe you had a book bub. They can take away your page reads and say you were bad and not pay you. And there's nothing you can do at all. So yeah, that's also super, super cool. Um, you stopped using them once you heard. You're definitely getting Demon's Guide. Daphne, you are my hero. You and Amanda and Sydney and Heather, obviously, because we know how much I love Heather. Um, you know, I, uh, I will tell you, by the way, I also sell all of my audiobooks solo and I sell them for so much cheaper than you can get them literally any other store. Um, because of that, because I basically sell them at ebook prices since I get to keep most of the money from them and I'm still making more selling my audiobooks $5 from me than if Audible were to sell them for $25. Think about that. I make more selling them for $5. Like, isn't that great? So you guys should definitely, you said, where can you get Black Swan on audiobook? You can get Black Swan anywhere. That one is out. It is on Spotify. It's on our website at ragingHippostore.com. I'm like 90% sure that's the store name. Um... You can get it on Scribd, you can get it on Audible, um, like you can get it a lot of places. Um, so I know that when it first came out, there was an issue in one of the chapters. Um, fun fact, that actually wasn't my narrators, that was also Audible. Somehow one of the chapters got corrupted when she uploaded it because I listened to it, the version that she put in, like audible between somehow when she put it in and what I listened to and what ended up being sent out, it was corrupted. Um, so one of the chapters was corrupted, which resulted in some unhappy people. Um, I don't blame the people for the record because you couldn't hear it right. It was crap. Um, but yeah, so that's been fixed. Uh, the new one was uploaded to audible as well. Um, the correct one is, is the one that's been uploaded everywhere. So literally anywhere else and you're going to get the correct one. Um, you said that is insane, the price gouging they are doing to authors. It is insane. Yeah, it, it's super duper insane. Um, it's part of the reason a lot of authors feel like they have to publish faster and faster and faster um, and end up having to sacrifice some steps in the process, whether that's, you know, proofreading, um, taking longer to think through plot things, uh, different stuff like that. Because the more books you put out, the more you make, ideally... And if you're making less per book now than you would have five years ago, you have to put out more to overcome that. Um, so that sucks. That's not fun. It's great that people are able to put out faster in some ways, but in other ways it sucks because I get it. As a reader, you want to be able to binge and finish a series like ASAP. Um, I also relate to this. However, <laughs> however... Because I have ADHD and a toddler, this combination has made my attention span not quite a goldfish, probably closer to like my corgi. Um, so I'm really into standalones lately. I've been reading a lot of standalones. Contemporary has more of them. So I tend to read more contemporary lately than I even do um, like fantasy and PNR. Um, one series that I really enjoyed that's like, it's a lighter read. It's not... Um, it's not super angsty and it's not super, like, it's not dark at all. Um, Juliet Cross put out a series. The first book is called Wolf Gone Wild, and I've enjoyed that one. Um, it's one that, like, if I just need kind of a palate cleanser, something easy to read that I'm not going to be, like, terribly losing sleep over or, um, 
struggling to keep up with. Like that's a good one um, that I've enjoyed. Like it's spicy, but it's also not um, dark in any way. Do you and your co-author plan on making more together in the Black Swan series? Um, so we would love to write Hades and his story. Um, I think that we are planning to do that at some point. Um, that may be something that when our Patreon eventually launches, we kind of see what direction readers end up pushing us to take um, to some degree. I do think we'll eventually write Hades' story, but the main story is just the trilogy. So like Fury's story is completely told. Neither of us see anything further there that needs to be told. Um, if we wrote more in that, which we'd like to, it would be Hades' story with Jules. So that would be super cool. And interesting thing, um, it kind of has a Hades and Persephone twist because the idea I had for the original Hades story does um, with her. So it's kind of got a little bit of influence from that. Um, I think that it would be really great to get to write it. Again, it would be a standalone. It wouldn't be a full-on series. Um, but it would be great to get to write it. Uh, we've even got a cover for it. We've, all, we've got like two covers for it. Um, yeah. So we've got... We've got plans, as we do for many things. Um, there's always so much going on in the background, even if you guys don't see it. Um, I hate just throwing stuff out there that's like half thought out. Um, I have had a tendency to do that in the past, and it's kind of come back to bite me a bit. So I try to be better about it these days. Um, jury's out on if I succeed, but I definitely try. So, Yeah. I think, I think that covers most of the things in terms of like update updates. Um, I will say Kiss by Chaos, Bonded by Death, the, uh, the Her Immortal Monster series that's about Nat. Let me see. I have the hardback here. That might help some of you guys remember it. Um, it's, so the covers are changing one more time. Um, Ebook covers. Uh, the paperback and hardback cover will stay the same. So we're not changing those because I know that's going to be like, honestly, the first question I'll get from people because they're like, oh my God, I want a complete set. And I put a lot of thought into that. Oh no, I just knocked over like, I think that's my author's, author's cards, author's stuck list. Yeah, so that's fun. I'll pick those up later. Um, okay, so this series, Her Immortal Monsters, um, this bad boy, <laughs> it's actually a really long book. Like, I, um, because printing is so expensive, I had to make the words a bit smaller in it. Um, but it does have pretty, pretty chapter headings, as you can see. Um, and I do think the cover is gorgeous. I love it. Um, and the inside cover, fun fact, is actually a version of the ebook cover. Um, so that one is, uh, super duper great. Um, but that is going to have the ebook covers changing. Um, the paperback and hardback will be staying the same though. So this is the hardback. The paperback is another version of this. Um, I actually have, oh, this is how I label them. <laughs> Signed avail for available. So this is wrapped in plastic wrap. So, you know, but that's the second book in it. Um, we're going to be keeping that for paperback and hardback. Um, the hardback of book two actually isn't up yet. So Great reminder, guys. Um, and book three will follow that. Um, the one thing is, is we're going to do an additional paperback that will have the new cover. So that'll be like an, a, an alternate version, but you'll be able to finish out the series exactly as it is. Um, no changes. Like I'm going to try in the future for when I do change covers to attempt to not... Um, if I change them partway through, still making it so that you guys can finish things out. Um, so that you don't feel like, hey, like I, I got this and then like I didn't get to get it in the same cover and now I'm kind of stuck. Like, so I've, I've really taken that feedback to heart. So I'm like working on doing that for things. Um, and that series, that's definitely going to be how that's implemented. Um, you said, I love all your books. Do you guys miss writing full series? I mean, that's an interesting question. So... Covet Me, our most recent 
release. Do I have that here? No, no. I don't see it, so I don't think I do. Um, Covet Me was a 141, 142,000 words. Um, fun fact, the Grimm series was like 150, 155. So it's a standalone that's literally the length of a series. Um, and so in a lot of ways, no, I don't miss it because the standalones are much longer. The thing that can be hard with it is like, okay, I'm going to take Reject Me, you know, Reject Me did really well and you guys loved it. And that's why we got a second season of Immortal Vices and Virtues. Um, Reject Me was like 111,000 words. So it was the longest book I had written until Covet Me, um, with AJ and like, it did really well, so it was easy to justify. Um, Covet Me hasn't done quite as well. And so when you spend the length of time that you would on a series writing a standalone and releasing it all at once, and because of doing that, like you guys are getting the full story and it's not priced as I would for a series. It's priced as a standalone because no one would pay the price of a series for it. And so when it doesn't do quite as well, that part kind of sucks. Um, that is the flip side of it is I had so many people that would ask, say like, Hey, I want the full story at one time. Like I don't want, you know, series in the sense of like the books are split up. Well, that is what that looks like. Um, and if it doesn't do super well and it's as a standalone, then it kind of blows because you don't have the other books in series that kind of help make up some of the, it doesn't do as well. Um, so that's, I would say, like the flip side of that. Also, I noticed as soon as I started talking about that, several people dropped off this chat. Um, so, you know, we're still writing series. The standalones that we write will be interconnected. Like we have Reject Me and Worship Me. Um, so Reject Me is Danny and Elias' story. Her sister, Adora, that's the story that's Worship Me. Um, and then... Covet Me is a new heroine and heroes that there's some overlap and we get to see Danny and Elias and um, Adora and Pan, but it's not about them. Um, sorry. Currently season three is in works. Uh, I didn't think through saying that, but yeah, season three is in works. Um we won't be announcing much about it for a while. It is MF though. So season three will be MF and uh, the current plan is for it to be releasing next year, similar to the last two seasons. And so that's like super cool. Um, and if you guys want season three, that's MF help support season two because it's kind of necessary. Um, I am working on a standalone right now. This standalone is going to be really long, though. I'm realizing that given how far in I am and we still haven't met the love interest. Um, it needs to be a standalone. And yet I question if it needs to be a duology simply because it will be very, very, very long. Um, and at a certain point, if I spend half a year writing a book, um, depending on how it does, uh, also, if it's too long to put in a singular paperback without making the words like 0.8 font. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to see where I'm at next month with it, see if it's picked up in terms of uh, like how long I think it will be in game. But I do like I'm like 95% certain this will be even longer than Covet Me. Um, and this new standalone is high fantasy, high fantasy romance um slow burn high heat so same as like the vast majority of my series um but standalone version again if it's longer than covet me it will be longer than some of the series that I have but as a single book so I'm super excited about this one um interestingly enough I had the idea for this series like five years ago so I talked a little bit about it last week um I've gotten a bit further in it as of this week and so I'm feeling better about it <laughs> Um, I was struggling some in the beginning trying to like find my footing, but I, I think I've gotten it now. So, yeah, 
Yeah. If there's any other questions, just let me know and I will quickly answer them before I get off. I'm going to try to cut this one a little shorter this week though, just because I did end up doing like a 50 minute one last week and I didn't really mean to do a 50 minute one, but tis life, tis what happens. Um, I, uh, got started late as well. Do you plan on doing another Kickstarter? I do. I do. I'll be launching a Kickstarter for the Demons of New Chicago special editions here soon. Um, these special editions are super, super dope. They're really awesome. And so I'll be launching that here soon. Well, I'll be launching the pre-launch here soon. And then, um, I'm hoping to put the actual Kickstarter live in August. Um, so yeah, that's my, my current plan. Um, we want to make sure that everything is shipped out for the Reject Me Kickstarter before launching another one. Um, you know, I got these super cool stickers that, so this is something I did. I actually drew all of this actually. Um, so I drew the crow and I drew the eyeball and then I did our initials and I really loved it. And so when there was a sticker mule deal, I, uh, I ended up saying like, Hey, wouldn't it be fun to have that done? But like, you know, it was for glitter ones. So I've got like a whole stack of these suckers now. Um, fun facts. So ooh, all of the stickers, the glittery stickers, um, what does the pre-launch do? The pre-launch is essentially, it creates the page for you guys to see, and then you can choose to follow it so that as soon as it goes live, you get an email and the email's like, Hey, this thingy has, uh, has gone live. So you should, you know, back it. Um, I'll tell you, you are going to want to, like, I'll tell you what day it's going to go live because th that's the one thing I don't like about Kickstarter is they don't tell you what day something is supposed to go live. Um, but I will tell you what day it's going to go live because here's the thing. I have early bird stuff this time. Um, and so I'll tell you right now, the early bird like reward will be a set of art inserts. Um, so it's going to be like the same price as the regular. The difference is if you're one of the 50 people that backs it first, you will get the full series set of art inserts. So there's like four of them and they're super illustrated, pretty, of the book and yeah so you'll get those with it just for being one of the first 50 people if you back the early bird edition so i'll tell you guys what day it goes live i uh, i will i will post my profile because i'm actually i created a new one simply so that it was separate from my personal i didn't realize this the first time around when we ran the kickstarter um, but the account I used was like linked to my personal. And so a lot of messages and things were getting lost. Um, and I was feeling overwhelmed because you can see I've backed like 29 Kickstarters or something. Um, some of them are author related, but some of them aren't. And so I created a se separate profile that I will be doing this one under, um, because, and it says author Kel Carpenter, like that's the name of the profile. Um, and that'll be how this one's done just so that I don't miss messages and they all get emailed to the right place because it's really not great when I'm being swamped by updates from 29 Kickstarters as well as updates from my own with people that ask questions and then I don't see them. So I'm sorry you missed the reject me one too. That is really unfortunate. I know that we will be giving away a few... Um, I say giving away. Uh, we'd have some damaged copies that we'll be putting up for sale at a more discounted price, depending on how damaged they are. Um, we also will be selling like the leftovers. Um, so that will be an option that's going to be available in the Raging Hippo store. Woo -woo. Um, so you'll be able to get that there. And we'll also post about it when that goes live too. Um, once we finish shipping and people have gotten their stuff, so we know that there's no boxes that need to be fulfilled again, no when stuff has gone missing, whatnot, then we'll be looking at how much we have in terms of stock so that we can put those things up. Um, I also am planning to auction off uh, like a singular edition of the Reject Me Kickstarter one um, for my mom. So 
that'll be a thing. I, I don't honestly know when that's getting posted. Because again, I'm not putting anything up for it, whether it's damaged copies or other things until all of them have been shipped and dealt with and whatnot. 